Nice one to Asdin of Grinning Wolf Games, who's written this one for us. It's the game Berserk Boy. And my goodness, does this one look like an amazing mixture of Sonic and Mega Man. Berserk Boy combines some fast-paced 2D platforming with challenging gameplay. And in many ways, it's like, um, well, Asdin combining Sonic and Mega Man. You took the words right out of my mouth. Does it manage to achieve that, though, or is it a berserk idea? Well, let's find out. In the far-off future, the people of the Earth face an unimaginable threat from a mad scientist and his army of darkness. The only hope for humanity lies in the hands of the Resistance, a group of courageous warriors dedicated to protecting the innocent and fighting for freedom. Our hero teams up with a fiery talking bird, where they come under attack from the evil Dr. Genos. I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say our hero undergoes somewhat of the Spider-Man treatment and finds himself transformed into something a little more powerful. Enter Berserk Boy. At its heart, this is a high-octane platformer with an emphasis on exploration and score attack. The stages are filled with several different collectibles that require the player to explore every little nook and cranny, or even to replay the level with a specific power-up. You start out with a lightning power, which allows you to dash in different directions, but also to interact with switches within the environment. You can attack enemies by jumping or dashing into them, and also, interestingly, once he's tethered to them, he can release a spark to finish them off. Now, as you progress through the game, you'll battle the evil doctor's henchmen, who also do wield the same power, that being the berserk orbs. And, as I'm sure you you just figured out, defeating them gains you their powers. And just like Mega Man, you can switch in and out of those powers on the fly. It's not just about the playstyles though, it means various new different types of attack, as well as different ways to traverse the environment, it's a lovely little touch. An example would be some of the solid objects which stop me from exploring the level further. However, once I defeat the game's first boss, I gained the fire drill ability, subsequently allowing me to burrow through and reach to the other side of different areas and finding lots of lovely goodies. There are floating objects which will only work with the right ability, such as the ice kunai, and in that regard there are a few metroidvania aspects in here, encouraging the player to revisit those levels and use your new skills. Other collectibles include the blue power orbs. They keep the player's ability tank full up, but they also double as an upgrade currency. With the right amount, each ability can be further enhanced. They are a little pricey, and it can take a lot of grinding to obtain the right amount, but as I say, it is designed to be played numerous times. Within the stages, you'll find teleporters, and they also act as respawn points. They mean it's much easier to actually do that exploration and go back and forth, while giving you the handy benefit of banking any of those collectibles. As well as a few other things, you'll also find members of the Resistance. They've been stranded in the stages. Now, you can actually rescue those and return them to your base. And in a strange way, they act a little bit like keys because some doors require a certain number to be rescued. And if you manage to find them all, then you unlock the X stage at the end of the level, like the little bonus stages you used to get back in the day. Now, on the subject of speed, which this game really does have, the levels have been very cleverly designed, using both power orbs and enemies to signpost progression. You almost follow a path dashing and bashing your way through as quickly as possible, bouncing off enemies in succession, with everything adding to your momentum. And I haven't even mentioned the rails and springs that add to that stylish speedrun feel. There's also good progression from stage to stage where it teaches the player, enabling you to use these things more effectively as you get to the more tough challenges. We haven't really spoken about combat. It's another area that's quite polished. The Ice Kunai power focuses on ranged attacks and speed, whilst the Air one gives you this repelling shield. And it's worth noting that certain enemies will require certain skills to beat. Finally, you've got the Berserk meter, which allows him to release a special attack, although that does need to be charged up first by collecting yellow orbs dropped by enemies. Ah, all the different orbs. More orbs than you can shake a stick at. Now, towards the end of a the stage, there'll be a boss. However, most of those were actually reskinned versions of previous encounters, which is a bit of a shame. But the real challenge came from fighting Dr. Genos's henchmen. It also would have been nice if they'd included some form of online high scoreboard. It would have really added to the desire to replay levels. Oh, and there are lots of different accessibility options, as it is quite challenging by default you can tweak things to your own taste. What I think makes Berserk Boy stand out is that it caters for both speed demons and explorers alike. Each power has its play style and can be upgraded accordingly to suit your needs. There's a ton to discover, especially when obtaining a new power, even if that did feel a tad grindy at times. And most of this is facilitated with some really nice tight controls. Gameplay scores 17 out of 20. 
While those controls, they score 18 out of 20. Visually, well, it has some very nice, vivid, pixelated style, with each area themed after an element, making them quite distinguishable from one another. There's a good variety of enemies, although there is some repetition in that area that I mentioned, some would say a little too much. The special effects are animated beautifully and add to the speed and power of Berserk Boy's every move. It's a bit of a personal thing, I'm not overly fussed by the Dragon Ball Goku hairstyles that seem to proliferate the experience, but that's just my personal bias. The story segments are also very nicely handled, almost like an interactive comic. Tech size is decent and I didn't have any frame drops, which is absolutely ideal. On the subject of the sound and audio, Tease Lopez, the musical composer of Sonic Mania and TMNT Shredder's Revenge, adds his bombastic songs to this game and it really does elevate the experience. Dashing through the levels whilst listening to its soundtrack, I'm pretty sure made me a better player. Just check out the music. The voice acting is alright, it's a little repetitive, and it mainly comes from the main protagonist himself after he performs a move. Visuals and performance, they're very good, although I would have liked a little less character repetition. Still, overall I think it deserves 17 out of 20. The audio scores an excellent 18 out of 20. Berserk Boy is going to release for £15.99 or your regional equivalent and it's just 1.3 gigs to download. There's no physical release yet, but I would say this is a perfect physical release for someone like Super Rare or Limited Run. And there's a lot to do and go back for, although your first playthrough will probably take you around 6 to 8 hours. Now the added easy mode and accessibility options are going to be a welcomed addition for some players and I'd say the value is pretty spot on for a game with a lot of replay value, especially if you love score attack games. It scores 18 out of 20. Berserk Boy has taken inspiration from many beloved retro games and genres but manages to stand out thanks mainly to how they blend into one coherent bombastic platformer. Few games balance these so well, and it has that one more run feeling that you'd find in a different genre. If they added in an online leaderboard and scoreboard, I think that would only benefit the overall community here, because undoubtedly speedrunners are gonna love this. Thanks to Asdin for that one. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Let us know down in the comments. As I say before, we might have a copy of this one to give away. So yeah, it's always nice to get rid of those extra codes rather than they just sit around. Thanks to all of you, to our Patreons, our members. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.